Hello friends, welcome to the channel. If today is your first time visiting with us, I want to extend you a very warm welcome and invite you to review our over 300 videos as we are confident you're going to find something to enjoy and also find it useful. If you've been here before but you have not subscribed, please subscribe. If today is your birthday, we want to extend you a very happy birthday. Today's project is designed to be both useful, unique, inexpensive and also something that you can do without using a lot of tools. We went to our local restore and for a total of about five dollars we purchased two doors like this and already we've taken the hardware off and we are going to keep it for future projects because it's very good uh, European kind of hinges. And then we purchase uh, selving units like this. Again, we have to. Well, that doesn't seem to need uh, a lot of sanding. No. Looks like the doors need sanding. Yeah. And then a top. And the only thing that will need cutting is this top. Right? So everything else will not be cutting, we'll try to minimize the amount of tools we're going to use and simplify the process and we're going to build what? A, not a bookcase, what do you want to go? Mm, it's just a shelving unit for baskets. So we're going to build a shelving unit for baskets and we have from uh, a prior visit, I don't remember where, some uh, baskets already. Mm -hmm. But if you were to buy them, these are things that you can find in dollar stores or discount stores at uh, reasonably good prices, right? Right. So I would say that this is a project, what, $10, $15, including the baskets? I mean, it's $5 for the wood. Mm -hmm. Can you buy the baskets for $10? Yeah, I think so. It's been okay. a little while since I bought them, but they're around now. So 10 or $15 project. So stick around and see how we're going to achieve it. So right now I'm getting ready to sand and I have the top shelf the top of the cabinet sitting down here and then I'm using one of the shelves as a little bit of a template so I can kind of mark off where I need to sand. The top is considerably larger than the rest of the pieces we bought so we will have to cut that down uh, and I just want a rough marking about the area I need to sand rather than sanding the entire piece. Um, so I'm just gonna take the pencil and mark here so I have a rough area and knocking this down a little bit just so I have a little bit extra space. That back line didn't mark very well so I'm going to redo that. There you go. And now I can get started sanding. Um, Again, there's quite a bit of sanding to do on this and I'm hoping it comes down and takes the finish off the way I want it to so I can finish it differently. And I'm using a 60 grit sandpaper. <laughs> And as you can see, uh, it is doing a pretty decent job of taking the finish off. I'm going to keep working on that and then come back and show you that finished side, uh, at least the initial finished part of the, rip, the rough sanding. I will have to flip that over and do the side and then also this front uh, routed edge uh, to get this where I want it. And then I'll take a uh, finer grit sandpaper to do a better uh, final sanding of it once we get it cut down to size. So here I have finished sanding the first part and you'll see that back edge there is feathery because I don't need that back edge. Um, but I have sanded sufficiently to create space for, the, for us to cut out the piece. You can see that has some really nice wood grain. 
and I'm hoping that's going to come out with the finish that I do. And so now I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing to the so back side. So I've finished sanding the back and I've laid out the shelf which is my sizing comparison here. You can see that I've got edges all the way around. One of the things I did discover as I flipped over the board is that there are these indentations uh, which I think is from assembling a desk. This looks like it was probably the top of someone's desk and this is how they put them together. So I wanted to allow uh, enough space for us to be able to trim that edge off so that I'll have a nice clean edge. Even though that's on the underside, uh, we're going to go ahead and trim that. And so I took my sanding out a little bit further and that allows plenty of room for us to do that. I do need to flip it back over to the top side and take it out a little more to accommodate that as well. And I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So as you can see, I have finished sanding the top again. I did take a piece of the 60 grit sandpaper independently of the sander and use that to sand that beveled edge, the routed edge, sorry. And it is looking pretty clear right now. I'm going to move on to sanding the two doors. They don't need to be completely stripped down because those are going to be painted, uh, but they do need to be sanded so that the paint will adhere correctly. All right, so here's one of the doors that I bought. It's a shaker style cabinet door that uh, already has a finish on it, just like that top that I sanded down. And again, these don't need to be sanded down completely to the bare wood uh, because they're going to be painted. They just need to be sanded so that the paint's gonna hold up. So I'm gonna get started on sanding that door. So this is what the door is going to look like all sanded down now that it is. Uh, the second one's going to get the same treatment. Of course we'll wipe it down for all the dust uh, and that gets it ready for painting. Alright friends, so we decided we are going to use dowels to make the connection between the doors and the shelves. So this is the step we're going to try and uh, complete now. Okay. That's tightened. And this. Well, you can do it. We can do it in the other side if you want. Mm -hmm. Flats again. Yeah.
Okay. Now. Do you want to mark it? No. And then we should have taken them off. Well, they're really deep enough that I didn't think it was going to be a problem. Like, they're pretty far mm, deep. We have to take them off regardless. This is very close to the ends. Mm -hmm, sure is. Because it was, it was there. It needs to be actually out. Okay, let's do the other one. Okay. Well, do we need to take that out? With this. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Let's this. Well, you can do it. We can do it in the other side if you want. Last again. Here. Then we should have taken them off. Well, they're really deep enough that I didn't think it was going to be a problem. Like, they're pretty far mm, deep. We have to take them off regardless. This is very close to the end. Mm -hmm, sure because it was, it was there. It needs to be actually out. Okay, let's do the other one. Okay. Well, do we need to take that out? Do we need to take those out? Yep, that's the right here. I really don't think it went far enough for that. But... But then, I mean, it shouldn't have hit that. Well, you said it hit something. It sounded like it did. Okay, so this one does not need to be on the edge. But yeah, it does. No, because if it's on the edge, then it'll be too close. We just have to line up the edges of the boards. This will just be in a little bit, right? Okay, whatever you want. Can you grab this square there? Certainly. There, I think it's okay. What do you think? Okay. Lock it.
Is it okay? I hope so. I have to go a lot here because we have a little space here. No, we haven't done anything wrong. Yes, we have. They're not the same. It's fine now. We have done something wrong because this was supposed to be outside on the bottom. But it's fine. I don't really care. Well, we can put... The boards are lined up now, but we did it wrong somehow. Well, this we have to call it with, cover with wood putty anyway, all these things. And you're going to paint it, right? I'm going to paint it. So the, don't put it in yet. Okay, that, so that, that should work. We need to mark these to make sure that we don't get things turned around. Give me Can you give pencil. me a pencil, please? Thank you. Mark that as... Number one or something. Okay. And A, mark it there or on the side that doesn't show. Makes no difference. Okay. So, what do you want to do next? We need to do the other door, right? Yes, the bottom. Well, even this we did wrong. This would be inside. So we have here the remnants of the uh, hardware for the door. Should we clamp it? Do you want to clamp the, this? Sure. Now, let's put some glue so that we start drying in there. Do we want to okay. leave that sawdust in there or take it out? Exactly. Thank you. So for the sake for consistency you want to do the other door the same or not? Me as well, yes. Alright, so we need now how high you want the, the middle self. You're going to have two selves, right? Um, the bottom and... Yeah. The shelves are... You can stop. What does it say? 
and it's recording. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so what I'm doing is lining up the edge of the jig here with the point where I want the top of my shelf to be. And then we're drilling the hole. We're clamping the jig in place. Have it flush here, is it flush on your No, it's because of this board, so we don't have it flush everywhere, and so it just isn't. Do you do clean? No, it's fine. I just needed to make sure that all the boards are lined up. Well, you need it outside of that board, otherwise, the clamp is not big enough. Okay. Okay. And we're drilling 5 16 holes. And we will do that in the other side as well, and on the other door, right? Correct. Okay. And for these, we need to make sure that we're doing in the same direction. Okay. All right, friends. We have finished making the dowel holes in our door, in our sides, and also in our uh, bottom. I guess we have to make them in the other ones too, right? The other two shelves, yeah. But we're going to try to dry fit and come back with you in a little bit. All right, friends, and we are checking our, our fitment here to make sure that our dolls align, and, and we are happy with that fitment. So we are going to take it up apart, use some wood putty to fit, fill the imperfections, and then we are going to paint it before we proceed in the final Close assembly. These uh, areas that we put the dowel first in, and then with the wood putty, it will literally disappear once it is painted. Now this technique will not work if you plan to stain a piece, but as you, as you can see, we don't plan to stain it. We uh, sanded enough for the paint to stick to it, but it is not really at a stain uh, quality. And we're going to do the same on the other side. Again, we're using the doors as sides. And uh, you can do that in all the imperfections you have. Or if you don't want to, you don't have to. No. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm going to brain fire just what I'm doing. I need a... Oh, it's like... We actually need that hole. You want me to use the drill? No. That's what she has is great. Okay. Are you recording? Okay, so we, we made a small boo-boo, but that's okay. That's the reality of making projects. And uh, now we'll continue. We'll decide if we want to do any wood putty in anything else or not. And, and that is a personal decision or not. So, but this needed some wood putting, right? Yeah. All right. And we are prepping for uh, painting now. All right, and after a short cleaning, we are ready to do the, the painting of the project. And in, for this project, what is the color teal? Uh, yeah, that's not the official name, but that's oh, basically the color. Peacock blue. Yeah. Peacock blue. 
The official color is peacock blue. Blue. For those of you that like friends. It's supposed to be ice cave. That's ice cave? That's what they call it. Okay. The paint chip, but it does look very peacock blue. In a project like this, it makes sense to first paint everything and then assemble it. It adds a little bit to the time of completing the project because the paint has to dry, but it's really the, the best approach to this. So we have used the roller for this or? No. You're sure? I'm very positive. And this, of course, will be a very nice, colorful project when it is completed. Now, we plan to put legs on this. Uh, and the legs add to the cost, but that was just a personal choice. You wouldn't have to do You can make simple wooden legs if you want. Or you can sit on the floor, or even you can hang it, right? You can put it on the wall, attach it to a wall. Heavy for that, but if you had studs, sure. Well, you have at least one stud here. Nothing? Not even wah, a. Wah, wah. I like the sound effects. Let's go. <laughs> the sound effect. Yes, it was. excitement of painting. The material we use is not identical and that makes it even better for our purposes of actually... Of all the pieces that we've used for this project, we only need to cut one of the pieces and that is a piece we bought for us to make the top. So let's get into the cutting this. Well, that's too big enough, I think. The only thing is to keep it. That's why I'm not No, just. So if you're there and you just keep it, look here and make sure there's no gap. on the blade. Alright, don't put too much pressure, just enough to help you. Okay. 
matches, right? Yeah. Okay. But since you're burning it, I don't think you even need to do it. No, that's true, but I do need to get that cleaned up. I think the flame will... It won't react the same. The flame might burn it, but it will be different. This so to add character to our piece, we're going to uh, use the susibang... Uh, susugiban. Susugiban method, which is the burning Japanese method, to finish the top. What you see here is our top. And uh, the only piece in this whole project that we actually had to cut. I'm going to do both sides. I think you need to do a lighter burn. I don't want a lighter burn. But for this wood, it needs a lighter burn. I don't want a lighter burn. Fine. Then it won't look good. That's what you said about the one that I did really dark, and guess what? It looks really darn good. All right, don't listen. Yes. Why did you do that? I've set the camera perfectly. Because I couldn't hold it and burn it at the same time. But what happens when you put propane on wood? Propane or flame? Propane flame. Is this all the bad? Yes, but you can take it. And we're doing this process while the paint 
is drying, so we utilize our time better, right? Yeah. Of course, you can also do this over a period of several days. For filming purposes, we try to do it all in one day. Right? I think it looks good. You're going to do both sides? We ran out of propane, folks. We'll be right back. The propane burning continues. The suspense is unbelievable. Elpida doesn't find this funny. Well, I like this technique. I don't know why you don't like it. Did that say I like this technique? like a million projects. I didn't say I didn't overcome your objections, but you still object. I think you're crazy. Because I like exploring new ways of doing things. New is something that you have not done before. We've done that many times. So this doesn't qualify as new anymore. Thanks what? Thanks. Okay. Okay, so uh, the top is burned. I'm going to brush it down a little bit and then uh, it will be oiled to finish the top and bring out that grain and the color. And that's what it looks like. And even on the edge there, um, these cut edges didn't seem to burn really. Um, not sure why. Uh, but they didn't want to. But I did do the underside where it's going to overhang a little bit on the shelf. All right. Okay, so the uh, putty that we used to fill in those holes is now dried and I'm going to sand those down. Okay, and here I have the first door uh, side set up so that I can apply the first coat of paint and hopefully it's just one but we'll have to see how that goes. Some slight scenes here, where the pieces come together. 
on the door. Now yeah, these are repurposed cabinet doors, they come with a resource. Really nice. In fact, the hardware is probably more costly than what we even paid for. There we go, the first side and first uh, door piece, and get the others painted, and we'll come back in a little bit with the next part of our project. Okay, and here I'm back to the shelves, and I've set uh, the first one up on the painter's point. You can see that it's raised off the table. Uh, this helps keep the finish that is right on the edge of dry, um, completely dry, while I finish up this other back side. I'm going to do that real quick. And we have had to take everything inside because once again we're down to pretty chilly temperatures here in the garage, which means things do not want to dry very well. The paint goes on all right, but this doesn't want to dry out here in the chilly temperatures. And you probably noticed some of these uh, little grommets. This is because I bought these secondhand from the restore. Uh, they were part of a shelving unit that came in, I guess. Um, but they were a great size and they worked for me and I really liked the price. I couldn't buy the wood for these shelves for the same price, which was a dollar. Um, and to me, for this project, uh, it doesn't matter to me that the metal is there. It might matter to some of you. We might want to remove them and go ahead and fill them in with um, wood putty to make it more clean. Uh, but we've made it so that these are supposed to go down on the underside and you really shouldn't see them anyway. that side done. Uh, a few more to do and hopefully when we come back we'll start the assembly process. Okay, um, as I'm waiting for things to dry with the paint I'm gonna go ahead and wipe down the top that we cut and burned earlier and then I'm gonna oil it with some coconut oil. Softened it, uh, made it oily in the microwave. 
nice. Very nice. here in the not very nice temperatures things are getting a little solid again pretty quick. So it's creating a film on here which I'll just take another cloth and rub down to get the excess of. But I do want to get this edge. It's kind of frozen up again, solidified because it's pretty chilly out here. So I'm going to take a clean towel again and wipe away a bunch of that extra. And it means when it warms up, I may have to do that again. Just to make sure that it's nicely protected. instead of trying to wave it back and forth real quick. Because that does give a better burn. Let me go a little bit more slow and steady. Oiled. And I think it's going to look really nice with that uh, peacock blue as the rest of the cabinet is. And I'm getting ready to do the final bit of painting the back sides of the doors that we're using for the sides for this cabinet. Uh, and that will be our final bit of paint, these last two pieces.
I'm going to start okay all right the paint has dried and we are going to be ready for final assembly an optional step we're taking but you're not going to have to is we purchased some legs because we like the look of them uh, you need to come a little forward that, that doesn't yeah uh, you can easily make wooden legs for this, but we decided we wanted to go with this. So, we have everything we need, and we're going to use brackets to attach the top. So if in the future we want to change it, let's say put a different top or put a, a man-made top or a marble top or whatever, we have the option to do that. Again, you can make it fully attached. You can brad nail it, or you can use, again, um, dowels. But uh, we are now ready for the assembly. Elpida, you want something to say? No. Nope. No? That, that, that is Elpida's contribution to talking about the project. All right, folks, so let us get set up for the assembly and we'll so be right we'll, with we'll you. We'll start by assembling the bottom first. And we're going to do one side and then we're going to tag the other side. So just align the the pieces we will have to tap it I'm sure mm -hmm. perfect This seems fine. Well, they're not quite butted up. Right, next. Well, we need to adjust it. Cut okay. it. Okay. Cut the dowel. It's clear the dowel is too long. Okay. So then we have to take it back out? Yes. Can you stop it, please? Take it back. And we're just repeating the process with the second piece. All right. I'm sure we have to cut that one. You know that that one, but that one. Sure. Okay. Good. Okay. We've attached the bottom and one of the shelves. We are ready to attach the second self. And then we're going to do the top. Side. Yeah, the other side. You know, make sure you tap your dowels. Again, the because of the thickness of this, you don't need a lot of the dowel protruding, otherwise you will have difficulty uh, aligning it. But and if you're a little bit off, that is okay. That's something you can correct, actually. Which one do you want to correct? Mm -hmm. I think it's the other one, because this comes out too much now. Okay. Try it. Am I wrong? No. So if you miss for a little bit, just extend. Am I in front of you? Just extend the hole a little bit and the little more. Huh? This one's kind of bad. Okay, we can fix that. Can you take it out? Alright, the three cells are placed. Again, we are going to attach the, the top using uh, brackets, right? So we don't we're not going to do that at this moment. So the next step will be to uh, do the bottom, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to put the dowels first in here and then we're going to, to put it on top. So 
Sorry, I know you cannot see it, but I need the place to hang it. So the three selves are attached and now we're going to put the brackets for the top and, and attach the top of course. So the brackets are behind you. All I need is a piece of wood so we can... probably need screws. That's what I'm talking about. The bonnet screws? Not those. The legs can be screws. Okay. So with the slight change of, of plan, uh, we actually put this top piece inside rather than on top of the sides because we made an incorrect measure and uh, not only wouldn't overhang but it will not uh, really fit on top but it ended up being a good thing because when we burned the wood the wood actually developed a bow even though it was perfectly straight before maybe here it's more visible on the right so it doesn't overlap the sides of the piece it sets inside Right, but if it was overlap, we wouldn't be able to do it because of the bow Correct. that they would develop. So we'll call that an unfortunate accident. So we're going to move on now to put the, the legs on and we're going to show you the finished project. All right, friends. So we finished the project and here it is. We have a couple of uh, touch-ups to do. I don't know if you want, we can put maybe a, a finish here to cover all these holes. It's up to you. And here's our top. All right. Now the idea behind this project, remember we did minimal cutting because we put the pieces at the dollar, not the dollar store, at the restore, the dimensions we wanted them. The only piece we had to do was, to cut was the top. And we saw you how we did that. And of course this, again, I, I didn't think of this before, but we'll either, um, put some, uh, what do you call it, wood uh, filler and paint over or we're going to put a little strip of some finishing and uh, here's an idea, how about if we make little strips, you burn them and all the edges are burned. Anyway, we still have a couple of details to do but the, the project in essence is completed. So let's show you how we're going to adorn it and we'll be right with you when we're done with that. All right, and here is our idea. We found these uh, baskets, right? They are called baskets. At a very reasonable price. I don't remember, do you remember how much they were? It's like three or four dollars for a pen. Okay, so what you will put the total cost with the adornment? I mean, you definitely don't have to do that, right? Right. But if you want to do this look, so that would be two, four, six, yeah, about ten dollars, and five dollars for the wood. Uh, now so the legs added fifteen dollars, but that's just a personal decision that I wanted. Right, and and I know that it looks that the legs are not touching the ground. They actually, they are very steady on the ground. They have a little uh, plastic button. button on the bottom. So if you were going to put it on a wooden floor, it would definitely protect the wooden floor. In any case, well, this is our completed project. Here. No. Adorable. Yes, adorable. The, the cabinet, I mean. I think, oh, I see, thank you. Uh, of course, you can use a lot of different materials from the top. As I said, uh, in Restore, we routinely find uh, pieces of marble. Granite. Granite, yeah. And that would look really good, I think, with a top, uh, granite top, right? I think so. Yeah, just keeping in mind that granite is very heavy, so you have to 
have to be aware of how you're attaching it and then it will add to the weight of the overall. Right, but well, I'm talking about look now. So th there are many options of how you're going to do this. Uh, we need a few final touches to, to make it complete, but uh, I mean it is complete to, to make it perfect, I guess. So we need a couple of things, but in essence you see how this is supposed to look. For $11, I'm not including the legs because again those are totally optional. You can use wooden legs if you want. And that would be, actually I have all the material in the shop to make wooden legs. It will be zero extra cost, but even if you buy them, you will probably add another dollar. Once in a while, we do see legs or things that you could use for legs at the restore. There was just nothing that right. made for this project. So, uh, we're talking about a below $15 project anyway. If you enjoyed this uh, project and you enjoy our channel, please smash that like, bu like button. If you didn't, smash the other button twice. Share, like, subscribe, and comment. Let us know what you want to see in the channel. A, a little reminder, I'm going to be in Europe for the next two weeks, so I'm not really sure what kind of videos I'm going to, to generate from there, but I will be posting midweek and on the weekends as we always do. The subject might be a little different than what we're used, however. From the Garage Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, Elpida, and Durban Homesteading Channel, we bid you a great week.